wouldn't have interrupted the, uh, oh, the member of Fewers being totally relevant, but her time has expired. Sure. Uh, Michael Wood. Speaker, I'm um, a little surprised but delighted to be able to stand up and speak today. Uh, surprised because the ACT Party and Māori Party have not taken up the opportunity to speak in this important debate um, about tax in our country. And I was looking forward to David uh, Seymour's contributions given that earlier in the day he excoriated the Minister of Finance for wearing a hammer and sickle because of these working for families uh, changes, but then meekly voted in favour of the budget. So I was looking forward to his contribution tonight. Looking forward to the contribution of the Māori Party, whose constituents, for the very great part, will be those who receive this, the scraps out of the tax package that is in this bill. And I'll talk more about that shortly, sir. Right. I've got to say, anyone watching this debate, sir, will have been slightly confused this evening. We have had contributions, of course, from the government, but also from opposition parties. Opposition parties are often good allies in the cause of a stronger and more just and fair New Zealand, but have somewhat surprisingly voted in favour of the tax cuts package that is in this bill. And let me just break down the issues with that, sir, because it's all very well to say, oh, well, it's better than nothing, and some people at the low income end will get something about this, but it, it ignores the question of opportunity cost, because as we all know, the government coffers are not infinite, and every dollar that we put into this tax cut package that goes to the people at the top end is another dollar that's not spent on the people who really need it, another dollar that's not spent on housing and the social services that we need. And let's look at this really simply, sir, and I'd invite members in this House to actually spend some time in front of a spreadsheet. This is a $1.9 billion tax cut package. And do you want to know how much of that $1.9 billion goes to the top half of income earners? $1.5 billion of it. So when any member of this House gets up and pretends that this is a, a tax cut that will deliver a great, greater level of social equality in our country, they are ignoring not only common sense, but the very facts, the very data that the government has put through in its own documents. Over 75 per cent of the benefit of these tax cuts go to the top half of income earners. And you know what, sir? The top 10 per cent, the top 10 per cent of income earners get the same benefit from this tax cut package as the bottom 50 per cent. So I'm not going to stand here and listen to any other member of this House tell the Labour Party, which will proudly stand here and oppose an inequitable tax cut package, as we always have, because we stand up for working people, not this, just the privileged few at the very top. I'm not going to stand here and hear anyone in this House say that this tax cut package delivers a greater level of equality or greater social justice in this country. And I want to uh, just demonstrate that further, sir, by talking about a family that could have lived in my electorate. Back in 2007, um, if their rent at that time was $450 a week, we'll go along to the Reserve Bank CPI calculator, and that'll tell you that their rent, if it was $450 back in 2007, which was the last time that the accommodation supplement was increased under a Labor government, their rent today would be $690 a week. $240 more. And do you want to know what? If you take the very, very best case scenario out of this miserable package which has been put forward by the government today, and you add up the tax cut, you add up the accommodation supplement increase, which would be an $80 increase for that family, and you add up a family tax credit, that family would be $155 better off. $155 better off when their rent has gone up by $240 a week. So just on the increase in housing costs under this government, that family is worse off. And so we're not going to stand here, we're not going to stand here and hear about the generosity of the government for putting up an accommodation supplement, which it has frozen for 10 years. Bear in mind it doesn't come in until April the 1st, 2018, so it will have been frozen for 11 years at that stage, at the same time as ordinary working families alone over the last three years have had a $40 average increase in their rent. So what we see at the very best, sir, in this budget, at the very best, is this government kind of, sort of, part of the way, making up for the erosion in the incomes of ordinary working families under their term in office over the past nine years. Sir, there are a number of other things um, in this package um, that uh, bear a bit more um, scrutiny. Um, I was interested to see, in the bill, claims that only 80% um, of uh, people claim the independent earner tax credit. Well, I thought that was quite high. But actually, in the Finance Minister's speak, speech, he claimed it was only 30%. It'd be good to hear which is actually correct. Being as this is the budget, 
could, the, could we uh, understand whether this is right or the finance minister was correct? Read the document yourself, Mr Bishop. Sir, this bill delivers nothing but scraps for ordinary working uh, families. It's time for a fresh start, and we look forward to delivering that in four months' time. Thank you. Mr Speaker. Jared Hayes. Thank you, Mr Speaker.